All righty, uh, I'm Priscilla Lundberg and I'm with Portland Metro STEM Partnership. Many of you have engaged in our Engineers Week activity in the past, so you may remember me. Um, this year we are engaging virtually, as many of you know, as we're doing everything virtually. And um, once again, Intel has really stepped up and done a lot of work to make this challenge happen. So I'm gonna Hi let everyone. Yeah, I'm so excited to chat with you all virtually um, and really excited to kick off Engineers Week this year. Um, we always love participating in this. This is our fourth year um, trying to visit every fourth grade classroom in the Hillsborough School District. So thank you so much for um, being creative with us um, and joining us as we um, kick this off for a virtual Engineers Week in 2021. So here you go, you get to see us in our natural habitat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the reason we put this here, not just you know because we thought maybe you'd like to be more uh, aware of who we are, is that later on in this discussion, you'll see we've asked our volunteers to do something similar. So the whole reason that the Intel Engineers Week activity with Hillsborough began is because we have seen a dire need for positive influence on our students of color and our girls to choose STEM careers. Why is that important? Because STEM careers are where the high wage, high demand jobs are. And a lot of our students of color don't have access to those careers in their personal lives. They don't see it in their parents. They don't see it in their families or their neighborhoods. So the only um, opportunity for them to have a perspective that they might be capable of this kind of work is from interested outsiders like the amazing volunteers that come to your classrooms. From the graph, you can see uh, that in Oregon, this was a survey of high school juniors interest in STEM. And the interest for males on the left graph is in blue and the interest for girls is in yellow. Obviously, the boys' interest has grown. The girls' has pretty much stagnated. It hasn't gone up very much at all. And then on the right, again, there's another graph that shows the data based on self-identified um, ethnicity by the students. And sadly, and perhaps not surprisingly, the, our students of Latino and our Black students aren't um, showing increased interest in STEM either. And if we as educators and we as a community in Oregon want to actually just be economically successful as a whole, we need to make these kids, help these kids see that there's a place for them so that uh, they feel welcomed and comfortable and capable of STEM work. Thanks for sharing that, Priscilla. Um, and I'm just going to touch on what our activity is going to look like this year. Um, so if you've participated in Engineers Week in previous years, uh, we did the pop fly activity. And this year it's going to look different. Um, the activity is called the Lunar Lander. And the challenge that the kids will be presented with um, is to keep their passenger safe as they drop their Lunar Lander above their heads. And what's their passenger? What's their lander? Um, so the passenger is going to be a small Tootsie Pop that they are going to get in these kits. Um, and the lunar lander is whatever they decide that they want to build. So we provided materials like index cards, a paper cup, um, straws for them to create a vessel so that when they drop their lollipop that it's safe, it doesn't fall out. Uh, so this is a really fun activity that is part of our Intel Future Skills Program, um, and we're really excited to be able to share these kits with the kids. So thank you, teachers, for helping facilitate um, these kids picking up their kits, and, and we've made it so that on the day of the event, every kid will have this kit in front of them that they will then open up and have all the supplies that they need. And I do want to note that um, we are giving each kid an innovation journal and a pencil, so uh, we want to encourage them if they want to draw out their design before they get started, that they can do that in that journal. 
Thank you, Blake. And uh, I do want to say another thank you to you and, and Intel, Blake, because uh, Intel has provided over 1,200 kits to our students in Hillsborough. Every single student has their own kit. And in that kit, um, I think you can see there is a welcome card. On the other side of that card is uh, that same text in Spanish because part of the really exciting opportunity in this virtual world is that families can engage with the kids on this work, not during the classroom activity, but beforehand, afterwards. Um, we know that a lot of our kids uh, are really relying on families now. And I'm hearing that um, a lot of families are really stepping up in their communication with educators. So we think that's a really positive aspect of all of this. Yeah, I'm glad you shared that, Priscilla. And speaking about involving families, if you don't mind moving to the next slide. Um, oh, I think we're gonna talk about future skills after you share a little bit more about Engineers Week, but I'll tell you a little bit more about how the students can engage their families um, in the slide after. Awesome. Thank you, Blake. We can just jump around. <laughs> um, so how is this gonna work? Uh, the <clears throat> engineers are coming to your classes to help the kids learn about engineering design, help them see that they are capable and competent in science, technology, engineering, and math. They don't have any capacity to manage a classroom. Um, we've worked with them in their own hour-long training on ways to engage, but they're going to be looking to you to manage the kids, help them navigate how things progress in your classroom. They really just want to be there as support and rely on you for your expertise in everything else. Um, we are going to have you control uh, the breakout rooms that we'll be talking about in a bit here um, for the volunteers, as well as the main classroom itself. And Later on, we'll talk about uh, exactly what those breakout rooms might look like. Um, and then also something I, I forgot to mention earlier is, as you no doubt know, fourth grade is a really pivotal year for a lot of kids in determining whether they feel like they're capable and welcomed in science and technology and engineering and math. It's where a lot of our girls get the message that they're not, where a lot of our students of color get that same message. and. I'm aware that you guys already work on that. This activity is to bolster the work you already do and give you a little bit of support to um, change that narrative for those kids. Great, um, so I shared a little bit about Intel Future Skills. So um, the Lunar Lander activity is one of many activities that Intel has just released um, and it's all online at intel.com slash future skills. So if your students really enjoy this activity or you know of families that are looking for more ways to integrate STEM education at home, this is a really great resource for you. It includes the activity lists um, with the materials needed and all the instructions and videos to go along with it. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about Intel Future Skills and all the activities that we have on there free of charge, you can go to intel.com slash future skills. All right, uh, the visit agenda, what's it actually going to look like? Um, Again, educators, you know, <clears throat> agendas can get a little bit uh, squirrely in the moment, but this is our general overview that we've shared with the engineers. Um, we want them to be able to introduce themselves, briefly explain the challenge. We, this is not an opportunity for engineers to go into a long explanation of their you know, pathway and what they do, because we know right now at the very beginning of this experience, the kids aren't gonna pay too much attention to that, that information yet. So they're gonna go over the design challenge using some slides we'll show you in a minute. And then we're gonna rely on you to help the kids understand what the engineers mean when they say we'll be in a breakout room or how that's all gonna to come together. Because again, I know that ultimately, I have, a, I have a fourth grader. I know that ultimately the kids are gonna to have to be reminded a few times about how this stuff works. Um, the work time we envision as a 30 minute period you're gonna have one engineer who stays in your classroom, your main classroom, 
And then two engineers that are in your breakout room, able to have one-on-one -on -one dialogue with the kids, well, one on four or five, depending on your student size dialogue with the kids. Um, again, our past experiences with this challenge is that kids feel heard and recognized as capable when a adult in that field talks to them personally. It's, it's not enough to just stand in front of a classroom and say, you can do this, you know, um, for kids to really feel, for adults, everyone, to really feel a personal connection and recognition, we do need it to be more uh, intimate. Um, so that's the thinking behind the breakout rooms. The kids are gonna move through the breakout rooms pretty rapidly during that um, 30 minute period. All the kids will be at different stages, obviously. You know, the first group of kids going in is just gonna have started their planning. And the last group may be complete. The, the engineers have been prepared for how to deal with all of that, to have questions that are appropriate to the stages they're at, to be uh, really sensitive to the fact that some kids are gonna show up at very different places even at the same time. And that that's all part of the design process. Then you will bring everybody back together and uh, be able to corral everyone's excitement and we're hoping by this point um, that most of the kids will have their cameras on. Uh, we know um, that trying to have a discussion with a group of people where it's all blank screens can be difficult. And we're also well aware that, you know, we can't ask our kids to turn their cameras on. I do find again with my fourth grader, the more interested and excited he is, the more likely he is going to have his camera on. So hopefully by this point, the kids have gotten pretty excited. And I'm going to let Blake talk a little bit more about this testing and summary period. Yeah, um, and one thing I just want to add, as Priscilla was talking about the structure of the classrooms, uh, some of you will have two volunteers. And so how we suggest for that to go is that um, you would be managing the main classroom and then both volunteers would be in that breakout room that you can move them through. Um, so I just wanted to add that, that it might look a little different depending on how many volunteers are in your classroom. And then, yeah, we wanted to share a little bit about this summary and questions period. So hopefully there's a little bit of time at the end. We know the kids get really excited and some of this can go kind of long, but hopefully there's some time at the end that the students can interact with the engineers after they've completed their activity. And we are encouraging the engineers, I'm gonna be sending them an email um, when I connect them with you all to encourage them to send them a photo of something that makes them feel very passionate about their work, some connection within their lives um, that connects what they do and what they're passionate about um, with this activity. And so this could take many different forms, but we are just encouraging you to get in touch with your volunteers and they can share with you if they have something that they would like to share with the classroom. Um, and this is a really great chance for the students to then ask questions to the engineers and just get to know them a little bit more personally. All right, let's talk a bit about those breakout rooms. So um, I know that all of you have been using breakout rooms in your classrooms. Uh, the Intel volunteers have not been uh, using any of the Google Suite um, applications. So they are going to be relying on you to be the experts on all of this. Um, they're gonna join your class with a classroom link that many of you provided on your initial sign-up survey. You're gonna share your screen um, to show classroom slides that you will see shortly, and then put the volunteers in a breakout room and cycle groups of kids through that breakout room. So what we're asking of you is to use whatever classroom management technique you already use to handle small groups and breakout rooms and see uh, and come up with the best way that suits your kids to have a breakout room and a five minute timer that puts the one group of kids in and then one group of kids out. If you have questions about any of that, um, please email me and you can also reach out to Mandy and I will email her contact information to you. I'm sure you have it, but I will send it to you as well. But my, my guess is you all already have this stuff down. Okay, so just gonna share a few next steps. Um, so the first one is that by next Thursday, so that's February 11th, you will receive an email from me and that will be an email to you and your volunteers 
Um, so you will know who your volunteer team is from Intel. And like I mentioned before, you will have either two or three volunteers. Um, and that email will also indicate who is the volunteer team lead. And so this is um, somebody who will be responsible for being the liaison between you and the Intel team. And they will also be responsible for connecting internally with their team to make sure um, that they have everything that they need before their visit. And we really wanna encourage you to reach out to them once we send you their emails. Uh, please be sure to share any classroom details that are really important to you. Um, if you have a dual language classroom, if there's anything else that they should know, um, really important to share during that time. And then maybe most importantly, making sure that our volunteers know how to access your classroom on the day of is really important. So if you have a link that you always use, um, if you can send them that, um, if there's another procedure that you use, just please communicate with them so they know how to access your classroom on the day of. I also want to mention that um, Intel employees do not have G Suite access. So they will likely not be using a Google account um, to access the classroom. So they will have to be added to your meeting as a guest. Um, and I know that if, I know there's some information online if you're unaware of how to do that, but like Priscilla said, um, we know you're very well aware of how to use Google Meet, um, but they will have to be added as a guest. Um, and yeah, they may want to set up a call with you to chat. Um, so just be aware of that, that we really want to encourage that dialogue between you two. Um, and yeah, make sure that when your students get their kits, it's gonna be really exciting. They're gonna really want to tear into it and open it. We hope so. But um, make sure there's a sticker on the kit that says, please do not open until your visit. Um, and if you can just share that with your students as well, um, that they uh, should not open the kit until the day of their visit so that everybody can open it at the same time, that uh, would be great. And then have fun. Um, we are so excited to keep this going for the fourth year in a row. And we are so appreciative of your partnership here. Um, so this is gonna be a really fun day and we hope that you all have fun as well. So really quickly, we are gonna show you some of the slides that your engineers are going to ask you to present and screen share for them, which means they may be saying to you, could you go to the next slide? Um, as they go through this. Uh, also, Blake, I'm sorry, it just occurred to me, uh, it's a good idea to, to certainly check in with your kids ahead of time about the kits and letting them know that this is gonna be happening too, so that mm -hmm. when they walk into the classroom, since we are on such tight time constraints that they aren't quite as taken by surprise as they might otherwise be. Yeah. Um, pleasant surprise, but still surprise. Um, so this is what the engineers will be hoping you, or asking you to, to show that day of. As Blake mentioned, we've got this first slide. You got to see Blake and I in all of our you know, native glory. Go ahead, Blake. <laughs> yeah, and so the reason why we shared those photos of ourselves is to share uh, what we're encouraging our volunteers to send to you um, so that you can put this in the intro slides so that the kids have a better idea of who these volunteers are. And we're encouraging them to not use their driver's license photo or ID badge photo this is a picture of them to show their personalities, uh, their hobbies, their passions. Um, so we are encouraging them to send that over. And I will mention that when I connect you all together in that email. So we're hoping that they will send you that photo um, so that you can then put it in the slides because it's just a really great point of connection and kind of can humanize the volunteer. This uh, slide will be the one where we talk to kids about why we call this the lunar lander. And because of course, many of our kids aren't as familiar with the science program in the United States or NASA or much of that stuff, um, they may not quite all understand what this means. So the engineers are going to ask the question, what does lunar mean and what does lander mean? What we are hoping you can do is handle how the kids ask questions or give answers in the classroom. Our engineers aren't going to know if you unmute them, if they unmute themselves. Also, um, since, again, I have a child in fourth grade, we know that there are some kids that are going to speak up right away, usually, and then other kids that aren't going to say a word. So again, your, you know, knowledge of your students and your consideration of how the kids can engage with the engineers is crucial here because we want to make sure that this doesn't go on forever but we also want to make sure that all of the kids immediately feel engaged and heard and again lunar lander 
conveys this one solution to the design problem here. But every design challenge is built around the notion that there are multiple answers, different ways of getting to a conclusion that solves the problem, that meets the criteria. So we wanted to give kids examples of different ways people have come up with solutions. Not all the materials you see in these photos are gonna be in those kits, but the point isn't that you have to have these particular materials, it's that there are different solutions. And again, giving kids the confidence to take risks and to know that when they try something and it doesn't work, that's just a starting point. Great, so um, really quick, just wanna share a few design criteria. Um, this is you know, the basics, like don't cut your lollipop, don't cut the cup. Um, you can't tape the lollipop inside of the cup. You can't cover the top of it. And these are things that the volunteers will share. And we obviously don't want to emphasize all of these restrictions as being restrictive, um, but these are just some of the basic um, criteria that they need. Um, and then also we added, don't eat your lollipop, um, but you can ask your parent at the end um, if you can eat it after the final test. Uh, and that the kids should be using their materials wisely we are being very intentional that the kids can only use the materials that they have inside their box to make sure that every kid has an equal opportunity to make a similar lander. Um, we know that there are some kids that have more access to more resources than others inside their homes. So we wanna really make sure that the students aren't bringing those outside resources in and they're focusing on using the materials that are given to them in the box. So, I know we're running a little long here on how much time you'd have to listen to us. Um, really quickly, this is the slide the kids will see that goes through the engineering design process. I know you have already talked to your students about engineering design. We don't need to belabor it. Uh, the five minute uh, suggestion you see at the top for planning is again, relying on you to know which of your kids might get caught up in planning and not quite get to the building stage quickly enough. And then this is the fun part. Well, it's all the fun part, but this will be that final part at the end after you have finished cycling your students through the breakout rooms uh, that you'll bring the whole class together and the volunteers will say, ready, set, go. And all the kids, hopefully they'll have their cameras on, but um, they can drop their landers above their heads. And this can be after a few iterations. Maybe the kids have already dropped it a few times and this will be their final test for their final lander. Um, and so they'll all do it at the same time, ready, set, go. Um, and we'll see if the lollipop stayed safe in the lander. So this is really fun. We actually did this with Intel volunteers. We did a training and uh, we had them just use materials around their house and it was such a blast. So um, I'm really encouraged and excited to see what this is gonna be like in your classrooms as well. Last slide. <laughs> yeah, uh, the very last slide is that we are gonna be encouraging volunteers to send in um, some images of a way that engineering has touched their lives or something that they're passionate about that they want to share with the kids. So um, in this slide, this is a volunteer that um, worked at Intel and rode his bike when it was dark out. And so um, he manufactured these light strips to keep him safe and more seen on the road. Uh, and so we shared this with the volunteers and we encouraged them to communicate with you if they have a story that they want to share and um, that they can do this in this end section, uh, which really brings it all together. And this will be the time when the kids can ask the engineers more questions as well. Thank you, Blake. Uh, so you will receive this slide deck for your, you know, purposes, obviously to share in the classroom, et cetera. You are welcome to contact me um, or Mandy with any questions at all. We're really, really grateful to so many of you, those of you who are coming back year after year and those of you who are new to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And as Blake mentioned, we did a training with the engineers where they engaged in this activity and the grownups had a lot of fun. So it's gonna be an exciting uh, day for our kids. Yeah, thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this training. And yeah, we're just so excited to visit your classroom. So thanks for partnering with us.